Yo, what's going on guys? It's Phantom here. Welcome to an Overwatch Workshop video. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a bot, you know, like, but not, not a normal AI bot, you know. We're going to make a special bot that you can control with coding. So that's what I'm going to be doing today in the workshop, you know, I, I, got, I got my code right here. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to show you guys the deal. Of course, got to move my camera because you can't see some of it. So uh, I'm going to set everything up right now. Then, yeah, we're going to get straight to it. All right, we're chilling over here. We're chilling over here. You know, because I, I want you guys to, you know, see the code. Okay. All right, let's get straight into it, man. We got 13 wolves here. I'm going to leave a code. Like, uh, where's the camera? Oh, my God. Right there. Yes, yeah, sir. I'm going to put a code right there, all right? So, you know, you, you guys can go there. Just put in all these settings real quick, you know? So, if, if you guys want to be lazy, no, I'm trying. Do, do that, you know, but if you guys want to stick around and learn what the code is actually doing, then, you know, which could be useful. It's very useful because you might want to make some changes here and there. So, you know, definitely make sure to stick by. I mean, really, you could just put the code in and leave, but I mean, you do you, man. All right. We're going to start off talking about this, man. We're going to start with the primary bot. Let's first really, really touch on what's going on here. We're creating a bot. Which is, it's like a dummy bot, basically, if I want to, it, yeah, it's a dummy bot, which you control with coding. And basically, you can make it do various things, it's really cool, you can make a whole game out of it, like I did, which I'm working on, you know, it'll be out soon, maybe, I don't know. It, it, it takes a while, like every day, like a couple of hours, and I'm still not done for like a year. Uh, anyway, let's, let's get started. Okay, so, first of all, we need to actually create the bot, so let's create the bot. So let's add a rule. And I'll call it bot creation. Uh, well, if, if you were to just put the code in, you're already going to see this. So technically, you don't got to do what I'm doing. I'm going to put ongoing each player on team one. For now, we're just going to make it a button command. That's the most simple way. Is button pressed. We'll just do that. Well, is button held. And we'll do, we could do interact, I guess. Event player button interact. So whenever I hit the interact button, that'll be like kind of the summon button, I guess. Create dummy bot. And then here you can select what bot it's going to be. I'll do a Cassidy. Why not? On team two. That's where it's going to be. Slot. Yeah, that's fine. And the position is going to be event player. So he's basically going to spawn on me. And he's going to be facing me as well. Just like that. Perfect. That's how we're going to create our dummy bot. There we go. So we have a basic bot creation. Of course, you could you know, mess with that a whole bunch. But we just want something basic right now. Just so I can show you guys what's going on. Okay, so the bot should be created, and here are the rules to control the bot, which we're going to talk about right now. Primary bot. The, the basic rule of the bot is to copy you. So whenever I hit primary fire, he's going to hit primary fire. Whenever I hit secondary, he's going to hit secondary. Crouch, jump, ability one, ability two. That's the basics of it. And then we have something called auto attack, which will basically whenever he's close to me, he's going to start attacking, which could be good for like a Reinhardt dummy bot. But uh, you could raise the number so he shoots from farther away in my situation where it's going to be Cassidy. We're going to go into that all a little later. Right now, let's focus on the main copying functions first. So primary bot, what's going on here? First of all, we have ongoing each player. Team is team one, player all. Conditions and actions. To put this very quickly, conditions are what needs to happen for the action to come true. That's what it is simply. So... The two conditions I have is, is button held, event player, button, primary fire equals true, which also looks like this. And my second condition, is alive, event player equals true. Once these two conditions are met, which event player is referring to me, it's referring to team one, it's referring to me. So every time you see event player here, it's referring to me because it says team one right there. So it's ongoing each player on team one. That's the event player. Whenever I hit primary fire and if I'm alive, he's going to press button. All living players on team two button primary fire. So whenever I hit primary fire, all players on team two that are alive will hit primary fire as well. That's what this is basically saying. It's the same thing with secondary fire, except there's two of them. There's a secondary and there's a secondary let go. If you use Weinhardt, you have to have a let go because he's just going to hold his shield up all the time. So we are going to need this let go command as well to kind of control that. But, okay, so we have secondary here. It's the same thing, except we change primary fire to secondary fire. So, look. Is button held, event player, referring to me. Button secondary fire equals true. And is alive, event player equals true. Basically, the same thing as this. It's just I changed this. Primary fire, secondary fire. Start holding button. It's not press button. It's start holding button. 
all living players team two button secondary fire so that'll look like this basically the same thing why do i look so dark about to set up a light hold up boom yes sir now secondary let go i'm going each player team one all is bun held event player bun secondary fire equals false which means that I've let go of the secondary fire button. And I'm alive, you know, we always, we always gotta make sure of that as well. Stop holding button. All living players team two, button secondary fire. So, he was holding it, whenever I stop holding it, he stops holding it. That's the vibe right now. That's what's going on here. Moving on to crouch. Same kind of thing as, as the other one. There's a hold and there's a let go. Basically the same thing here, I'm, I don't really got it. It's the same exact thing, I just changed the button to crouch. So is button held, event player equals crouch, all of that is alive, start holding button crouch on their team. And we see it here as well, is button crouch equals false, is alive, stop holding the button. Same kind of thing as the secondary fire, just for the crouch. There we got jump, is button held, event player jump equals shoot, is alive, event player equals shoot. Press button, all living players, team two, button jump. Okay. Now we got ability one. I'm sure you could guess what it is. It's, if, if I hold ability one, he's going to press it. Same with ability two. So, uh, yeah, there's there's that as well. I'll, in case you guys are writing, are writing the code, I'll just leave this up for a second. Leave this up for a second. But really, just just put the code in, bro. I mean, it's, <laughs> that in front of the video. Right, right there. It'll be. I'm horrible at this. Forget it. Uh, ultimate. Now this is where stuff gets a little interesting. We're finally done with all the same code. Now we're here. Ultimate. Very interesting. Very interesting. I do not have the ultimate set to where if I hit ultimate, he hits ultimate. No. Okay. It's all different. It's very unique. Team one, I'm going each player all. You know the vibes. Is in line of sight. Okay. Event player, all players on team two. Barriers do not block LOS equals true is a live event player equals true press button all living players team two button ultimate time to explain this sure this is basically just saying if i'm in the line of sight with this player and barriers are not going to block that line of sight you could put this on if you want this will basically mean that they were not oh if there's like a barrier uh well if you have enemy barriers yeah so let's just say i'm reinhardt the guy's about to open and I put my barrier up. He's not going to ult. He's going to wait for my barrier to go down. Then he's going to ult. Something like that. That'll be enemy barriers. And all barriers will be if their Lionheart even puts up a shield, the guy behind them will ult. Something like that. But I just have it on barriers do not block LOS. But you could put it on. I think enemy is a pretty fair fair one to put it on. I'll actually put it on enemy. Yeah, why not? <laughs> all right. So now it's looking like this. So once I'm in that line of sight and I'm alive, then the enemy player is going to hit the button ultimate. Now we got the last five. Well, this was just about creation. We got these four last ones. Walk, face, auto attack, and auto attack stop. Possibly the four most important ones that I had to mess with a bunch to figure out how to work. Okay, so let's go straight into it. Walk bot. Now notice immediately, now we're on team two. Every one of these rules have been ongoing each player, team one all. Now we're on team two. So just make sure it's on team two now with the walk bot. So walk bot, ongoing each player, team two all. Count of players within radius event player 2, team 1, off equals 0. Is a live event player equals true. So this is, now think of event player as the enemy team. This is what it's referring to because now we're targeting team 2. So event player is now referring to the bot in, in these situations now. So is a live event player equals true. It's saying if the bot is alive. And count of players within radius event player 2 of team 1, which is me now. Start forcing throttle, which is just walking. Event player, then you have these numbers right here. One, one, zero, one, zero, one. So this is just saying their minimum and maximum forward and backwards and all that. So yeah, we have it like that. And that is the walk bot. Let's move on to bot facing. This one's a little complicated. Ongoing each player on team two all. Is a live event player equals true. That's the only condition if they're alive. They're going to start facing. Okay, I'm gonna open this one up. Start facing. The player is event player, which is them in this case, because it's we're on team two. Direction, direction towards. Start POS. I position. Player, event player, which is still referring to them. And POS, I position. Player, first of, array, sorted array, array, all living players, team, 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 team one. 
So this is basically just saying their eye position to my eye position. That's basically what all that's saying. Value rank, distance between, start POS event player, and POS current array element. Turn weight, number, number 150, which this could be changed. I'll explain what that is. Relative to world, revaluation, direction, and turn weight. Turn weight is how fast they're going to turn. I mean, you probably guessed that, but all right. I like 150 because I don't know. It just seems natural to me. Like he turns, he turns around like a good, a good speed. But you guys can mess with this all you want. The fast, the more, the higher the number, the faster he's gonna turn, and the lower the number, the f f longer time he's gonna turn. Okay, I don't know. Why I had such a hard time saying all that. Okay, now we get to the last two things: auto attack and auto attack stop. Let's open them up. I'm going each player team two all count of players within radius event player four team one off is greater than zero that's what this looks like okay is a live event player equals true remember event player is is always referring to the bot now because we're on team two start holding button event player button primary fire what's going on here let's talk about it this is all all this is saying whenever he's within the radius of four to me he's basically going to primary fire so whenever he gets I don't really know what the four is to be honest. I guess it's four meters. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I don't know, bro. To keep this simple, when you increase this, he's going to be able to use his primary fire from a longer distance, which is what I'm actually going to up up right now to like 12. And the reason I'm doing that is because my bot is going to be Cassidy, so I want him to be at a good range shooting me auto. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put down 12. Four was set for like Weinhardt. That's pretty good for Weinhardt. So whenever he gets within like four of the radius, he's going to start swinging. But for Cassidy, I think 12 might be good. You know, he basically just shoots from a really good distance. I like 12. So I'm going to put it with that. Okay, then we have auto attack bot stop, which is basically the same thing as this, except, uh, well, it's basically saying it equals zero instead of being greater than zero. And uh, we have to have to match the distance now. So let's make this 12. So 12 and 12, we should always match the auto attack bot with the auto attack bot stop because they they work together. So always have the range on the same number. And is a live event player equals true? Stop holding button instead of start. So now we're going to stop holding button event player primary fire. There it is. There's how to create a basic bot. And we're going to test it out now to make sure it works. And I think it just failed miserably. So let's test that out. See what will happen. Oh yeah, I didn't even show you guys. If I crouch, he'll crouch. If I jump, he'll jump. If I use ability one, he'll use ability one. Some of ability two. That was not a good idea. I still survived it. Take that out. If you want the dude to just have unlimited range, right? Put this stop holding button to just start holding button. Start holding button. So now, basically, this is saying to start holding button. This is saying to start holding button. So he's never really gonna stop. He's just gonna shoot like crazy. Now, um, this this could be good if you're having some problems, like I was with the auto attack. I put this to start, and sometimes it was actually working better. Let's let's test out right now how it's working. Actually, let me go Reaper because I got the buff on him right now. So let's spawn him in. The dude's just gonna shoot like I should have increased my health. But look, he's just gonna keep shooting, bro. And I kind of like it like that. I don't really like him to stop with the range because he's, he's Cassidy. You know? he, he just keeps shooting you. So with this, I kind of like it to set it up like that. But um, with certain heroes, you might not want that, of course. But for me, this is how I actually like to set it up. I like to have it on start holding button and start holding button. That's just how I like to set it up. But um, yeah, I mean, it's your choice. You could put this on stop holding button or start holding button. So I, of course, there is other ways to summon them. It's just this is the easiest way I could do really quick. Uh, if you guys want me to cover more stuff like this, of course I will. There he is. Jeez, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway. Okay, listen. He got aimed by. Look, look at this. Look at this dude, bro. How, how am I supposed to compete with that? I mean, bro. I my hands are tied here, man. Bro, what you shoot? I'm just getting rolled by this guy, man. So, uh, this dude alone in the whole clip, bro. <laughs> Yeah, shoot him. Yeah. Okay, I didn't do nothing there. The way I got him. Well, he's actually so good. Get out, Get out of my sight, man. Like I said, I could cover a bunch of more stuff. I just want. Bro, this dude is tripping. Dude is mad, man. What did I do to you? 
Him spraying the wall in his spawn room, bro. Dude is tripping out right now. Bro. This is so rigged, man. Also, in my game, I've created like custom ability. My game isn't out, by, out, out yet, by the way. Like, my little custom game for Overwatch. I've been working on it like crazy, but I'm basically making like separate abilities for each hero. If you guys care, you know. God, this guy, man. Share code. Here you go. Here you go, guys. You know. So if you guys want to show like an advanced bot, you can have him do crazy stuff. Like with Ryan, I have him like auto charge when you're in line of sight, stuff like that. If you guys want that, let me know in the comments down below. And if you don't, well, okay, that's that's too bad. All right, it's a tough scene. On that note, I'm out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.